A quick look at why the F-104 Starfighter was the best interceptor of its time. Designed as a supersonic superiority fighter, the F-104 Starfighter was lightning fast. Development of the F-104 began in 1952, and the first XF-104 made its initial flight in 1954. As YF-104A testing continued into 1956, the first USAF contract was placed on March 2nd for 146 F-104As and 6 F-104Bs for Air Defense Command ADC, with 56 externally similar F-104Cs for Tactical Air Command TAC. F-104 Starfighter units in combat, a further 21 F-104Cs were added on December 26th. Lockheed's hot new fighter entered ADC service with the 83rd Fighter Interceptor Squadron FIS at Hamilton AFB, California, on January 26, 1958, two years after the anticipated introduction date. Its sister squadron, the 84th FIS, traded in its gravel gobbler Northrop F-89J Scorpions in June 1959 to become the first ADC unit with the two-seat F-101B Voodoo. Seventeen squadrons eventually re-equipped with this big McDonnell fighter, which was ADC's principal all-weather interceptor for four years. While the F-104A's gun and two sidewinders were effective at short range, the F-101B could carry two Air 2A Genie nuclear-tipped missiles with a range of more than 6 miles, or up to 6 AIM for Falcon infrared missiles. F-104As were inevitably short-term occupants of the interceptor alert pads because they could not accommodate the electronic equipment required to integrate fully into America's complex SAGE semi-automatic ground environment defense network. For ADC, the fighter's spectacular climb and speed performance figures were compelling at a time when the U.S. was thought to be well behind the USSR in the size of its bomber forces. This was an illusion dispelled in 1961 by another Lockheed product in the form of the U-2, which conducted flights that revealed much smaller Soviet air forces and no evidence of the nuclear-powered bomber that was believed to exist in 1958. By then, however, ADC had ordered the long-delayed Convair F-102A Delta Dagger followed by developed version of the aircraft, the F-106A Delta Dart. He estimated that this was only 150 miles against the target at 45,000 feet, but much less for those at higher altitude. In fact, although the F-101, F-102 and F-106 had better subsonic interception radii, the F-104 was the only fighter that could make a Mach 1.5 or better interception up to a distance of 150 miles with wingtip sidewinders. Its interception times from being scrambled were superior to those of the F-106A, and it could perform interceptions at a greater range than any comparable fighter. The myth of the F-104's lack of range may have originated in the tendency of senior officers and politicians to seek fuel-exhausting Mach 2 back seat rides in the two-seat F-104B, which only carried 73% of the fuel load of the single-seat aircraft. Service entry of 83rd FIS F-104 as was an ideal opportunity to demonstrate the aircraft's performance and enhance its reputation at a time when accidents during the fighter's test program were still making unwelcome headlines. Further time to climb records were set on December 10th and 13th and on the 14th Captain Joe Jordan flew an F-104C to 103,389 feet, beating the existing high altitude balloon record and making the F-104 the first aircraft to exceed 100,000 feet entirely under its own power. <laughs>